live from Mountain View, California, it's theCUBE, covering DevNet Create 2019. Brought to you by Cisco. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage, day one, Cisco DevNet Create 2019 at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California. Lisa Martin with John Furrier. Pleased to welcome to theCUBE for the first time, Mathieu Gerard, the co-founder and CTO of Mapwise. Mathieu, it's lovely to have you on the program. Thank you. So, Mapwise and Cisco are partners, but first, give our audience an idea of Mapwise, what you are, what you deliver, where you're located. Yeah, so Mapwise is a startup company. We are based in France. Um, and so we want to bring digital services inside buildings. We feel that a lot of our life has been digitalized, but that there are still a lot of services that can be brought inside those, those buildings. And one of the key elements um, when you speak about digital services in buildings is to have a map. A map where you can show all the different details about the buildings, the live data that is generating from all the sensors that is in the, uh, in the building. That's, that's where the partnership with Cisco actually comes in to bring all those yeah. infrastructure um, sensor that you get, to bring that to be displayed on the map as well and bring services to the user. So one of the hot announcements is the Wi-Fi 6. I'm jazzed about, it was a 802.11 something A or B, I forget what it was. They're now calling it Wi-Fi 6, thank God. Although even numbers, I'm skeptical of that. You know, odds are tend to be better, bug free, going back to our old days as you know. Uh, but Wi-Fi 6 changes the game at many levels. What are some of the things that will help you guys because you know, we all been in the buildings where concrete bounces RF, you can't get through certain things. We've all been in stadiums where it's kind of like a nightmare with bandwidth. Yeah. Wi-Fi's like you know, part of Maslow's hierarchy of needs now. We want, we want our Wi-Fi. Businesses want Wi-Fi, so new things are happening. What's your take on Wi-Fi 6? So our, our take is that we, we really want to, to bring all those, uh, all those services. Of course, bandwidth is something, but for us it's not necessarily the, the, the critical part. Uh, for us it's really the kind of data that you can get uh, from, from the Wi-Fi, making sure that um, all those IoT devices can be deployed in more and more uh, of those buildings. Everybody now wants to know if a meeting room is available or not. So what's the best way of doing that and just having a small sensor that detects presence and that can be broadcasted back uh, to the cloud and then uh, displayed on, on the map. So uh, there are so many sensors, that's, that's one of them, but in terms of pollution, of temperature, that's, that's if you have those in the building, can bring new services around all those, uh, those mapping. So bandwidth not an issue, obviously there's like a gig ethernet now and then it just helps with the signaling. What about range and coverage area and tenant chains? These are the kind of things we're hearing about some of the benefits. Does that help you guys at all? Does that help um, the maps and get more range? Yeah, I mean, and, and at the same time, what the, the challenge we are facing when we look at the Wi-Fi is to be able to use it to locate uh, people and to know where, uh, where I am so that I can be provided services ar around me. Um, and so that uh, usually came with a need for more density of, of access points because the more density you have, the better you can access the location of a, of a user. Uh, and so what we see is a lot of evolution in the Wi-Fi and the kind of uh, capabilities that they have yeah. in positioning people. So we, we hope to see uh, that as well in Wi-Fi 6. What's your vision on location services inside an enterprise? Because we saw that movie play out on the consumer side with mobile iPhones and Androids now everywhere. You know, we all seen it, we, got, we know when the Arbu's showing up and all the, all the things they're having on the maps, map mashups back in the old Web.2.0 days. What's the new sets of things that will come out that you see, what's your vision? Yeah, what, what we see is that, as you were mentioning, mapping and wayfinding is something we are using every day. And nobody would even imagine how it was uh, back in the time where we had paper maps. Uh, and so we believe that that is also coming into, uh, into all the office and industry environments. Um, and uh, for example, the possibility of seeing live what's, what's going on in my building, what's available as services, where are the people that I need to interact with, where are the assets uh, I need to actually go grab. Uh, that's something that today seems like complicated to do and I'm pretty convinced that in a few years from now it's going to be natural, like Waze is natural every day for, for everybody. And this is the opportunity for, for MapWise and with Cisco as well to convert existing structures into these smart buildings? Are you seeing that as well as with the development of new buildings that are kind of built natively smart? 
Yeah, of course the, the new buildings are, are built more smart and, uh, um, and, and with new infrastructure that's, that allows a, a lot more, but the, the new buildings are still a very small percentage of the buildings that are out there. And so the, the great thing is that um, all the infrastructure that already exists is already capable of a lot. Um, and so even with the updates that are, that are being done there, uh, there is a lot, a lot of data that today are totally not used that we believe still uh, can, can bring a lot of new services and a lot of potential. Are there any industries in particular where you and Cisco are working together where this is really, they're right for this type of transformation? And I can think of hospitals yeah. as one thing that comes to mind with being able to identify where everything is, sensors, services, especially in life and death situations. Yeah, so I mean, what, what we see is that everybody that goes in a hospital has the same uh, reaction. It's like, where is everything, right? It's, it's the kind of campuses where it's really easy to get lost. Um, and so, Whenever you, you get there, you need to get to your appointment, uh, and if you don't find it, what you're going to do is to ask, for the, to ask the medical staff. So you ask people that are actually saving life how to get to your next appointment, which we feel is kind of uh, Huge kind of efficiencies. Yeah. Not just asset tracking, which is low hanging fruit, IOT devices in terms of instrumentation, but just supply chain services, just I mean, like it's a tsunami of new things. Absolutely. Limited by a lot of old school, either technical limitations on connectivity at the edge, or just software, right? Yeah. I mean, like, and you, you know, know that in healthcare, um, there is a lot of time where a surgery room is ready with all the surgeons and the staff, and the patient is not there, because the person who is supposed to go get him in his room and bring him to the surgery block is actually late. And so we think that that's like such a waste of, uh, of time and money uh, that could be much better utilized. You could bring surge pricing into the into the surgery room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're backed up, or hey, we're I got low pricing. You know, I got a price line for. Uh, I mean, this is but this is all joking aside. But this is really important. This is like real value. Yeah. High price resources, idle in a hospital. There's probably a zillion examples of those. Okay, what's the low hanging fruit that you guys see when you look when you start rolling out map wise and start wearing, Is it just getting a physical footprint of it? Um, is it a, just a graphic rendering? Is it the mashup piece? Is it visualization? What are some of the key things that you guys are, are doing or, or have done to remove the blockers for adoption and create uh, more uh, movement towards that value? Yeah, so, so what we see is really the, the, the first step as bring some wayfinding, helping people navigate around the buildings. Um, and so basically taking the old stock of technical floor plans that everybody has, that usually just a few architects use in, in a company, and being able to drag and drop that into a web platform and from one day to another, making it available to 100% uh, of the uh, people that actually live in, in that building on a daily basis. So that, that's really the first step we, uh, we see, and then together with Cisco, bring able, being able to bring the location of the user so that I have the same experience outside of the GPS as I have inside the building with the Wi-Fi infrastructure. It'd be great to know, too, there's a lot of people streaming video around one access point, might want to add another one. These yeah. kinds of things just are natural ideas that people would, would do. Yeah, and uh, I mean, where the bandwidth is the best, where the noise is the lowest, uh, where potentially the temperature is higher, lower. You know, today in the flex office, uh, people can choose to, to sit wherever they want. So, what, is the, what are the key uh, reasons yeah. to choose one spot or the other? And I think that there are a lot more um, uh, value that we can bring to those, those occupants. So you have, at, here at DevNet Create 2019, you have a breakout, or had today, yeah a breakout and a workshop. Tell us about the workshop first in terms of the, the title, the conversations, and some of the interesting uh, conversations that you had with some of the participants. Yeah, so, um, so the workshop was about how to bring uh, the, the link between the map and the Meraki infrastructure that you have. And so potentially, um, even before uh, anyone connects to a Wi-Fi, we're actually already showing him usually like a, a portal, a captive portal where he can log in, and how we can add in that captive portal already services, like showing him where he is on a map, how to get to any destination, potentially services that are around him. Um, so, so that was the goal of the uh, of the workshop, and, and it was great because everybody was um, uh, saying directly like, in his uh, industry. Like I had somebody from a university and said, 
this is exactly what we need as well for our campus. So, so I think that's, that's something that we can also uh, to bring to, to much, more, uh, much more industries. They're much more of a horizontal opportunity, like yeah. you said, across industries. And you also had a breakout session. What yeah. did that dive into? So the, the breakout session was uh, specifically around uh, location analytics. So it's a completely different world, but it's, it's about then using the, the location of the crowd and of every single device in the building and see how, the, how people move. Where do they go? Um, and to understand the behavior of the people that are there. Just to give you an example, if you, if you look at an event like this one, uh, maybe the organizers would like at the end to understand how much time people spend more looking at the talk, looking at the workshop, going around. Uh, and so basically using all the data that's collected by the Wi-Fi, we can get a lot of uh, analytics and numbers to, to better assess if the space was so well organized. Yeah. Making sure people are at their desk doing their job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, I mean, that's, not that's, Big Brother. <laughs> that's the potentially uh, downside around it, so uh, yeah. it's something we Innovation need to be careful Innovation versus about. creepiness, you know, it's always the trade-off, privacy. It is, is what it, it is. It is a trade-off, and I think we need to be aware of when we allow it. I mean, when there is somebody working alone uh, in a building, you actually do want to know where he is because that's good for his safety. It's all over. We all have privacy problems. <laughs> we the pro GPS is, knows everything I'm doing here. Yeah, Get so, over it, so people. So I think it's good to, uh, <laughs> to know which cases and to have opt-in. Like yeah. some, sometimes I want to, I want people to know where I am exactly because that can yeah. actually help me. And I have other cases where I do not want it. And so I think it's also important that uh, any developer with building application with that data. Uh, is aware of that privacy issue and can know when to anonymize the data or when not. Great stuff. Matthew, thank you so much for joining John and me talking about MapWise, what you're doing with Cisco. Really, really interesting technology. Maybe next year at DevNet Create, you can tell us all of the analytics from this year. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we appreciate your time. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin, live on theCUBE from Cisco DevNet Create 2019. Thanks for watching. 